All right, guys, so before we start today's festivities, I wanted to be clear about something. So when I do these tests with an F-Lite versus an Instinct or a Rodeo versus a Ranger, it's not with the intent to uh, try and um, show that the one product is better than the other. Within the product line, all products, any company, you would have different products delivering different specifications and performances and serving very different purposes. In the case of the F-Lite and the Rodeo, for example, they serve two very different, uh, different purposes. The F-Lite is a more high-performance machine meant for pilots to fly longer range and has got a very good mobility um, element to it. The Rodeo, on the other hand, is a very sporty machine. So with that, you have uh, something that is nice to have at the field to go play in the afternoons to have fantastic performance. So when we took the old rodeo and we redesigned it to the new rodeo, there's, all, there's very little comparison. Uh, basically, the only thing that's the same would be the old skeleton and then also you would think that it's the same engine, but it's not. Um, some of, these, some of the questions came up, can we just take the new engine kit from the F200 engine and put it on the old Rodeo and have that performance? And that is impossible. You see, the new F-Lite 200 or F-Series engine is 50% Simonini, but it's also 50% uh, from Nirvana's own specifications, of its own manufacturing process and in suppliers and uh, how it's made. That is unique to Nirvana. It is exclusive to Nirvana, so you can't get it from Simonini. Um, so basically that engine has a complete different workable system with the engine being powered by three tiny batteries, the spark being powered by three tiny, tiny batteries. Uh, and this is very unique in the world. There's no other engine that I know of that runs in the same way. So that cannot work or some of those elements cannot be put onto the old Rodeo. So getting back to these products facing off against each other, we are showing you guys the, how we've moved forward in the product because I've seen some nasty comments out there where people say it's just get re repackaged and painted and it's, it's it's not true not even in the vaguest sense if anybody ever gets the chance to visit Nirvana's R&D department in Czech Republic they would be completely convinced by how much work goes into this by what I'm telling you guys now it is Santa's workshop there's everything from variable electronic variable pitch propellers, uh, the weirdest possible machines, so uh, rodeos with 230 engines with variable pitch and uh, instincts with KTM engines, and pff, it's a weird place because it is what it is. It's an R&D development project. And so we take the best out of what our pilots and our customers give us. We take the best of those comments, the most urgent of those comments. We take their feedback. We take feedback from the test pilots. We take feedback from the NRT pilots. And then basically Nirvana comes up with new designs or they improved designs. So what we're showing you now is that, for example, the Ranger served the purpose. The Ranger was designed for, for soldiers that needed to pack uh, 40 pounds extra armor and rifles and get them off the ground quicker. That's why we took the 230 engine, gave it a shorter propeller, the 125 propeller, and that assisted soldiers to get off the ground with a high center of gravity in rough terrain. Like my field, it's not a groomed field like you'll have at Austin Paramotors. It's, it's what you would call as the equivalent of a bush pilot's license when you come and learn to fly here. Uh, and therefore, when soldiers from the Special Forces come and train at our fields, it's basically a process for them to get used to landing in tough places. That's why there's trees and everything around this field. Um, it's tough conditions, it's tough takeoffs, and we needed to have a product that serves them well. The Ranger also served the purpose of being a really great farmer's machine and a Ranger machine for conservation. The reason for that is, is that uh, it's easy to it's easy to transport on the back of a truck. Uh, it's tough, its color is tan, so it doesn't show dust too much. Uh, and it was really powerful and served the purpose really well. So the Ranger will always be a fantastic machine. Now, it did have some issues. We're aware of it. The, uh, but it, the, the reason why those issues exist is because that engine had to work so hard with a power to weight ratio. So if you make something heavier, and you don't produce significantly more power, then basically the engine works harder and harder and you get more fatigue on, the, on, the, on, on elements of the machine. And 
what we needed to do was to get to a lighter machine, a lighter engine unit that could produce more thrust. So the science went back to propellers and other electronics and taking parts away from the old engine, like the ability to charge its own battery. And we had to come up with those solutions as Nirvana. And they've done it, they've cracked it, they've made a fantastic product which is very unique, very, very unique from any other paramotor brand out there in the world. Um, I race against most machines on long distances and what I appreciate about what Nirvana brings to the table is reliability. Uh, if you research this, you would find out on the statistics of the Icarus that, well at least I can't find a single engine seized on the Icarus. If you research competing brands and seizures on the Icarus, you're going to find a very different number. And I'm not trying to um, belittle other products or other brands. It's not the kind of person I am. I'm friends with a lot of other product manufacturers out there. And I, work, and I know they work just as hard to make sure that their product is of the best possible quality and that they move forward as well. So when you look at something like the Rodeo Revolution, I want you guys to understand that it's a brand new product. Now, F-Lite versus the Rodeo. I'm not going to do a shootout on that. I know it's going to be the next question, but they serve different purposes. I, for example, will not buy a Rodeo Revolution as a racing pilot, as a pilot that flies or needs to fly four and a half hours. Um, I can't do that on the Rodeo Revolution, because if I do that, I have to put the reserve tank in front of me um, that Nirvana also designs, and that becomes a cumbersome process. I do have a cockpit in front of me, but I stow other gear in there. And aerodynamics is the most important part when it comes to flying on something like the Icarus or fly camping, etc. We cannot with a new F-Series engine, and please take my word on this, you cannot put side-mounted bags on the Rodeo Revolution or the F-Lite. If you do, you run extremely high temperatures. Temperatures is key on the F-Series engine. No more than 240 degrees on the head, no more than 640 degrees on the exhaust gas temperatures. So when we fly it hot, when I'm saying hot, I mean putting out max RPM, you need to know that your temperature sensors are of utmost importance. You have to fly with your instrumentation like pilots do on normal aircraft, fixed wing aircraft. So get into the culture that if you want to fly high performance, you keep your eye on the gadget, on, on the gauges. And so this is going to be important for you guys moving forward in the US. If you're going to fly a three blade, there's basically no way anything can ever happen to you. So when you speak to your dealer at Austin Paramotors or any of the new dealers that are signing up to Nirvana, North America, then please, the following needs to be part of your discussion with them. Are you intending to fly two blade with spacers? If the answer is yes, then you're going to have to order the end gadget with temperature sensors and elbows and everything onto the, the, the Rodeo Revolution. The same goes for the F-Lite. We have to make sure that you guys are as happy as, well, as happy as possible. All right, so if you're intending to fly three blade, then you don't need the end gadget on your machine. It'll be fine. You don't need to watch your temperatures. Either on the F-Lite or the Rotary Revolution, you don't need the end gadget. So it's a pricing thing. Now comes the next question. Can you add it afterwards? We are looking into that. It's the same computer unit. It's easy to switch out the elbows and put the sensors on. But uh, from the computer perspective, do we need to have the plugins from day one ready on the, uh, the computer so you could perhaps add that on later on? Uh, in your purchase. So we're looking into that and we'll give you some answers. Then on to the frame. There's a double frame option with a double netting, single netting as well. And then the new frame, I call it the new frame because it's new to me. I, uh, I knew about this frame's existence but nobody ever orders it so uh, I never ordered it. And I'm kind of shocked about it because I really like it. I love it. It sits tighter on the skeleton of the machine. It actually just feels more sturdy, more stronger, more um, more of a high quality product. Now, what the R&D department is going to go do from today forward is they're going to change the netting a little bit, make the production quicker, faster, but the current version will be available. So you can get a single netting frame, which is a lot lighter, uh, and make your tire package lighter. It is a bit more cumbersome to put together, but not too much. It takes a little bit longer than the double frame if you just get gelled into the sequence. Uh, what do I recommend 
on the two different systems. I would say that if you're a beginner pilot starting to fly, it might be best for you to go double frame because it's easy to, if you've got damage on the double frame on any of the quarters, you can swap it out throughout away, put a new one in. All right, very quick, very simple. Uh, if you're an experienced pilot, I would say go with the single frame. Now, without further ado, I'm actually filming this after we've done the test. So I actually know what the result is, but I'm not spilling the beans. Let's get to the test, which has already happened. And then hope you guys enjoy the video. Got any questions, ask your dealer, ask me. Don't worry, let's get cracking. Morning, boys and girls. All right, so this is the big day we've been waiting for. The new Rodeo Revolution versus the Ranger 230. Me and Franz, so we've been up from around 5 a.m. trying to get everything ready. This is a brand new Ranger. Never been flown before, never been started up. It's the first time we just completed the running on the engine. Um, as you all know, this is a 230cc engine. It puts out about 33 horsepower, but it's got a 125 centimeter three blade propeller, which spins up a little bit faster than the Nirvana Instinct 230 but it gives a little bit of a worse fuel consumption because it's got that shorter propeller and faster RPM. All right, so we know and we love the Ranger. It's been a great machine and served us well. But without further ado, the Rodeo Revolution. Do I need to talk while I'm showing you guys this? I don't think so. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. And there ain't no words for that. Okay, so I've run in both engines. Francois's running the 230, he's gonna be flying the 230 because last time I let him race the air flight and I was at the disadvantage of being on the 230 Instinct. Today I'm having the advantage of the Rodeo Revolution and he's gonna be on the 230. Now that could go either way. I'm saying disadvantage, but we really don't know what's gonna happen here. I can tell you though that on the two blade, Rodeo Revolution this morning I did a quick test on two blade max power max RPM putting out 7560 RPM I'm not gonna run it it's a new engine so I'm not gonna run it hot like that we're not gonna do a 2000 foot climb it's gonna be a short test we're gonna do maybe a couple hundred feet that's all so it's just gonna give an indication it's not gonna be this nice balls to wall race that we, we would have liked to see but I can't be irresponsible on brand new engines so um, I'm not going to run it as a three blade, um, I'll do that a bit later, but I've also detuned it by um, opening up the H needle on this machine so it's going to put out 7110 max. I'm just saying that it can do up to 750 oh, and uh, it is quite hot. So um, that is really good news, it means it's, it's standard two blade going to be flying uh, or going to be stronger than the f -Lite. Um, okay, what else? Uh, so I've detuned it a little bit, so I'm not going to run it as hot. I'm going to run it at 7,100 RPM as a max RPM. And on this machine, I've got a single folding frame. Now, th what makes this picture nice this morning is that um, we're able to show you the difference in the look between the two. A lot of guys are going to prefer the double frame because of its sturdiness. My personal pick's a single frame. I know Nirvana's going to hate me saying that because it's a difficult thing to produce but I really love the look. It is awesome and it is light when you put that on. Okay, that's it. Let's get down to business. Oh, 
Game Alright guys, just want to give some feedback. The Rodeo Revolution did fantastic. It actually won the climb rate by a significant, a significant amount. But I'm going to give a warning. On this I will need to have to do some more testing on the temperatures right now it's producing pretty much the same as the airflight but uh, yeah I just want to be sure that without the shroud it can take those temperatures so I would recommend running this a three blade but just know that you have the ultimate kick-ass machine <laughs> 